What's good my roadies? Randy the REI Rockstar here. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I made $5,000 in profit on a property I never went to. My team did all the work and I'm going to show you how I did it step by step. Now this is 31st Drive up on the north side of Phoenix. Let's get right into the training here. If you don't already know about me, check out the blog. It's the reirockstar.com. There you can learn a little bit more about myself and get even a free gig bag where you can download a contract and a bunch of free goodies. So my story really quickly, guys, I'm just a regular guy. Again, it's Randy Matthew. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. However, I grew up to working class parents. We moved to Arizona in the 80s. And after barely graduating high school in, in the uh, late 90s, I decided to skip college. That was, you know, for my family and friends. I decided not to do that. I wanted to kind of work my way up the corporate ladder and just get a high paying job and maybe on the side become a rock star, perhaps. Now, I did everything from hard labor to customer service. I did retail sales, mortgages, all kinds of stuff, insurance products. And eventually I learned that climbing that corporate ladder just, you know, wasn't for me. So, you know, on the side there, I, 2006 rolls around, I'm 26 years old and I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was working a lot of hours. My band didn't hit it big just yet. And so I just told my boss one day, I was like, look, I'm going to go find another job, possibly working nights with the same amount of pay. And I want to pursue my dream to become a real estate investor. And lo and behold, this guy was very supportive. Fast forward, you know, till today. And I own and operate a real estate investing firm headquartered here in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, and I have five employees and we gross anywhere from 10 to 40,000 a month flipping properties. These are real deals. Here's one for 5k, you got a 6,700, a four grand, a four grand, even a 15,000 over here. And so, you know, when I first got started, I didn't really have a lot of help. I was spinning tires, spinning tires. I had analysis paralysis. And so that's the reason I started the REI Rockstar blog. I also came up with a couple products along the way that, that helped me and I want to share those with you. And I put them up on the blog of things like my, my uh, REI hacks, my leads on demand, and even my signature software I actually developed. And remember, barely graduated high school, guys. This is something I developed overseas with some great engineers. Helps me get comparable sales and make offers. So, And I did all this by being conservative. I never went to a boot camp, ever. I never spent 5, 10, 15 on a credit card. And three-day boot camp never happened. So, you know, in this video, guys, again, I just want to show you this particular deal break it down and i want to drop some nuggets along the way so take out a tablet a pencil a pen whatever you have to write down and just kind of write down the things that that uh you know sort of ring with you and if you have any questions at all just drop a comment under the video don't be shy and i'll, I'll get to them as soon as possible all right so here it is north 31st drive this is on the north side of town there's the house right there Here's a little bit about the lead. It came in from one of our websites. So back when I was struggling and trying to get this business off the ground, I didn't have a whole lot of money. So I just taught myself how to build websites. And I did this as, as the internet was transitioning out of web 2.0. And you know, instead of me learning HTML and JavaScript and all these things, which I still know a little bit about, but there was a lot of really cool sites um, that just sort of drag and drop, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. And I built a website, I built a form using this WUFU here, and as people go to my website, I'm ranking on the first page of Google for We Buy Houses, Phoenix, and all kinds of stuff, and they just, you know, they put in their information, this is what it looks like. So this one here is the home on North 31st Avenue, and I want, to, I want you to notice something, it says, downsizing from family of four to empty nesters. So there's their motivation. Very, very key. If you, by the way, Nugget, if you ever get a contract and you're not even sure what the homeowner situation is, believe me, I've done it. You've done a disservice to yourself and them. You probably even locked up the deal at the wrong price, and that's probably not going to close. Always, always, always put them first. Put the homeowner first. Put them first, and you'll make money after that, okay? So, you know, obviously with my admin specialist, Sophia, and the other girls, you know, they call these folks and they figure out exactly what's going on and how we can help them. And this little form helps us do that. It goes from there into our Podio system and admin just gives them a call and says, hey, you know, what's going on? Tell me a little about the home and then we'll put an offer together. They found out that the homeowners live there. It's in a nice suburban neighborhood. It's a four bedroom, two bath, two car garage, and it's got 1900 plus square feet. Decent sized lot and it has a pool right? And it was built in the late 70s. So it needed a fair amount of upgrading combined with repairs as well. And you guys will see, I'm going to break down these pictures here in a second. So when admin was talking to the seller, the seller wanted to move and downsize to a smaller home. You know, their children were off at college again. They don't need all this extra space and empty bedrooms. So they also uncovered what part of town they want to live in. And this was a really good sales technique, even though the admin folks are more leaning towards service 
they kind of get the people excited and the sellers excited about living in that new home and they want to push that button a little bit of what's what's the pain in that situation so remember that nugget when you're when you're scaling your business up and you know you're having your admin folks talk to the sellers have them re go over over and over and reiterate hey what what's the reason you're selling sell us on why we should be helping you what can we help you with are we a good fit because what you don't want is you don't want folks who are tire kickers who are looking for that highest price there's there's something called the mls for that you can hire a realtor have you know a bunch of people come through the house people who may not even be able to get financing drop out of escrow ask you to repair every single little thing that there's a market for that it's called the multiple listing service we are not that as investors we're the other side in fact we're a good percentage uh, a good percentage of, of transactions happen on this side of things cash transactions owner financing and stuff like that and even off the mls so um, they also outlined that they themselves just told our admin look we don't want to place this on the mls we we, we don't want to have to wait for the right buyer we just want to sell it as is we don't want to upgrade anything we're happy to just get a cash offer if that's the right price so that was a good match and our admin does a great job of making sure that that happens as soon as they get off the call guys a little bit about my business model here i have these you know eight folders that help us get all the paperwork in the right spot so that throughout the transaction as anyone needs it whether it's the analysis person or whoever the title company uh, another buyer we know exactly where to find it and you're welcome to copy this perhaps guys if, if i can get this video to 100 likes i'll go ahead and in the comments put it in there i want 10 shares and 100 likes if you guys can do that for me i'll go ahead and put this folder out there and e each one of these folders by the way has additional folders and it helps you stay 100 percent you know smooth transaction clean and clear it helps you stay on the right path when you have these folders uh you know helping you along the way keep everything in one spot so she does that she sets it up and she goes online and she gets the deed she gets the tax information after the call she checks she asks the homeowner to send us any hoa documentation stuff like that and then she just pushes it on down to our underwriting and analysis so what we did from there guys here's a couple of pictures of the property now this here was the this the front door area right a couple of the closets and overall i'd say the home was in pretty good con pretty good condition you know um, I always have uh, the person who goes out repair estimator take a picture of exactly the same thing on every house. So it's one or two pictures of each bedroom, different angles. It's a picture of the water heater, possibly the roof if they can get up there. There's a little bit of uh, you know some liability there, and then of course any repairs. So you'll notice he or she goes out, takes a picture of each room twice, and then some repairs. Takes a picture of each room twice, and then some repairs. And I recommend you follow the same. Here's, you know, nice bedrooms. Look, it just, just basically needs updating, guys. This is a 1979 home. I'm sure they might have upgraded carpet or tile once in that, you know, 35, 40 years. So you can see that, you know, the just the wear of the, it just needs updating, basically. Look at these old counters here, these old vanity. You know, this bathroom with the wood on that, that's very, very late 90s. So here's a bathroom, though, that was upgraded, which they told us over the phone. They said, you know, we, we did upgrade one of the bathrooms. Um, which looks nice, you know, uh, this tub, not so nice, just kind of bland, right? And then here's one of the downsides of the property is the kitchen. So the kitchen was small and, um, you know, our flippers, our rehabbers, they want to see a bigger kitchen. They know that that's a big selling point of the home and you really can't spend a lot of time in here. It's like, you know, one person, maybe two, um, and you know, that's not good. So I don't think anyone would go as far as to knock out a wall or move the kitchen anywhere, but this was definitely a downside to the property, even though it has some really good pluses. I mean, you're talking about a 1500 plus, almost two, basically 2000 square feet with a pool, four bedroom, not a three bedroom, but a four bedroom in a decent part of town. And you can see we got pictures of the uh, pool itself and the backyard and of course pool pump. So any electronics, um, AC unit, things like that, we'll ask, you know, repair estimator to get, and then it moves on to analysis. So the next step, guys, once we have all the characteristics, characteristics rather of the home, once we have all the information, bedroom, bathroom, square footage, and we know the homeowner scenario, now we can move forward. So at this point, it goes into analysis and underwriting. So we want to know a few things, right? So we can make a offer that's going to get accepted. This is not about the, you know, the infamous low ball offer. You want to justify your offer so that you can get that contract. So we look at sales. We, we want to know what's going on with solds, right? 
in the neighborhood solds. We want to know what listings look like in terms of not necessarily their price. We use the listings to look at condition and what somebody's listing for. Is there anything else that when we have our product on the market that somebody could be a competitor to us? And we look at days on market and of course a 12 month chart to see what you know price per square foot and what sales again have been doing. Um, and these, these two go hand in hand. I could tell you I focus mostly on these two over here. Not so much days on market or listings unless it's in a rural area. So here's a bunch of sales here. That's what you're seeing here. This is my signature software, REI AutoComp. It is available at reiautocomp.com. So if you want to go get that, check it out. And uh, you can see here the three yellows here represent the current market value. These three uh, greens here, if you were to average those out, is the after repair. And then you have these three reds that are the distressed market value, which is what a property would go for in that neighborhood if it's distressed. And we do adjustments for price per square foot. I want to show you guys something here. So here's all, all that you just saw above gets broken down into an easy to read sheet here. And we just look at these blue numbers. Okay. So the analysis person does all this for us, guys. So I don't even see the deal. It just goes all the way down the pipeline. This analysis person comes in gets all the comparables and says, okay, this is what the software's telling me is generally what, you know, the three properties that were the nicest, that were the most like this home. So if you want an ARV, this is a huge mistake. Here's a nugget that a lot of investors, especially new investors make. And what they'll do is they'll try to get current market value and do some kind of adjustment for price per square foot to come up with the ARV. I particularly don't do it that way. I don't think that's accurate. When you're talking about after repair value, if you want to just break it down to its simplest form, wouldn't the after repair value be that exact bedroom bathroom square footage near the home, right? That has sold in the last, say, three months, maybe six months. If you can, in other words, find a four bedroom, two bath, 1900 square foot home that's fixed up and has been sold in the last 90 days, that should be your after repair value. And if any of these factors are different, you should just adjust for the price per square foot or lot or a bedroom or something. So that's exactly what my software does, by the way. We pull out and check the, the condition of Kelter, Grandview and Kelton here, or rather Kelton and Kelton. And we make adjustments. We either adjust up to the average or just down to the price per square foot based on the difference here. So you can see here the lot size here is 8,000 and the averages here are 11. You can see here the actual price rather size is 1934 and these ones are slightly bigger. But overall, they're it's close and it's uh sold recently and you know we're good to go. Same same year, all that good stuff. Down here you have the current market value. So the same thing happens guys. Here's three houses that are in average condition. They're selling for around 232. Now, if you want to be uber conservative, you can always go price per square foot or up to average, just depending on how similar or dissimilar these properties are. And that's why I love the software, because even if we don't have a lot of comps, I can make some adjustments or have the analysis person make some adjustments on ARV or CMV or the, or the DMV. And we have a better idea of where we're at. For this property, we actually did not... Well, originally we thought, okay, great. Well, let's just go with the average because these are these are very much like ours. Uh, but we ended up adjusting later down to you know 266 or even 260 for ARV, and I'll show you that in a moment. Anyhow, let's move on here. You guys can see all that analysis number stuff, and here's the actual numbers. Now, based off of those first two analysis we just saw, we came up with after repair value of 274, and you know after looking at the pictures, we guess our property you know in rather repairs are about 20 to 25 grand. We wanted to make about a 10,000 profit. So what that tells us is if you do, you know, some calculation and minus out potential um, holding costs and points that we could probably go ahead and offer 205 and sell this for about 214, 215. If it's worth 274 after repairs, if somebody puts in 26 K and your job is to always think about the end buyer. Think about how your end buyers are going to look at this as a nugget. So it's not just about, Hey, I'm going to make some profit and make 10 grand. I'm going to put it out there and let them do all the work that might work. That's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and see if it sticks. Why not understand everything from top to bottom? And it all starts with that magical ARV. You want to know on every deal, every single deal, you must know after repair value, because it's what all the fix and flippers are going to be looking at. 
and the days on market, they're going to want to know if I buy this for 215 from Miami investment properties and I put 26 K in, am I going to be able to be left over with X amount of profit? And then of course you have to understand that each buyer is different. Why? Because each buyer is going to have X amount of money to put down on their next deal. So they are only going to have a certain amount to spend. Then they may have their own private or hard money at different, uh, LTVs, meaning loan to value. So they can get a bank to lend them only 80% or only 70%. And then there's the variance of does that bank lend at 12, 13, 14, or 18%. And all that's going to affect what they offer you and, and how the numbers will work for them. So you want to be conservative and assume that they're going to get a hard money loan at 70%, that they're going to be at 18% per year uh, per annum interest, and they're probably going to pay at least a point or two, right? And based off that, you should be able to come up with a payment of some kind, you know, to take 274000 times it by 0.70. Now take that balance times it by 0.018. That's the 18% a year. That gives you a, probably a $3,500 a month payment. Um, consider that 3,500 over four to six months is about nine to 13 grand in holding costs. That buy, that's the reason why when you put stuff out, that buyer goes, no, I need to be at 200. Does that make sense? Or I need to be at 195. And, and, or if they're lazy, they're just going to go, well, it's the repairs. I think repairs are 35. So understand all those factors is the point about the numbers and anticipate what you're going to move around. Are you going to show that repairs are less? Are you going to tell them, hey, why are you using this 18% company? I have a local company that can give you 12% and zero points. You see, help out your buyers, make the deal happen. Push, push, push. Let's go on to the next slide. All right, so soft pass appointments. So now that we had all that Call the homeowner back, explain the situation. Hey, we got all the characteristics. Is this all correct? We actually have a pretty long presentation we do for the homeowner by phone and in person. So it's calling them back. Hey, you talk to the admin customer service, whatever you want to call them, Sophia, the other day. And she confirmed that it was this, this, and this. Today's call, we're just going to you know, confirm this and see if we can be in business. Sound good? Great. And you move forward and you start presenting it. Well, I found this, I found this problem with the property. In the picture, there was this. And then you talk about, um, I found, see these comparable cells, this, this, and this. Do you have any idea what it's worth? And they're going to tell you this. What, what are you basing that out of? And blah, blah, blah. I have other videos on how to talk to sellers, guys. So I'm going through this quick. Point is, we offered 205 and they accepted it. So it's a simple contract. Wrote down the address. Wrote down the address up here. My corporation. And then, of course, buyer will pay and be responsible for all closing costs. Boom. Got a contract. Don't celebrate just yet got to open title. So here you have the admin coming back in. She actually does the admin work and our, our escrow coordination. She's coming in and she's opening up title. She puts in, you know, the suspected or uh, projected close date, opens up title with the title company and waits for that title policy to come in and all that good stuff. She also sends over the information of the seller so that title can contact the seller. Very important. Here's another nugget. So when you're, when you open escrow, whether it's you or an assistant, a VA or something, Get the contract in, take that purchase contract, send it to title and say, hey, I would like to open title on this property. I'm going to be closing this property on X date. I'm doing this via double escrow or whatever, however technique you're using or taking over payments. And hopefully you have a good title company in place. I have another video on how to do that. And that, that title agent's going to just open escrow, search all the docs and blah, blah, blah. But they're going to have to be able to contact you, contact the homeowner and potentially the buyer down the road. So give that to them, give it all to them up front, a nice email, title it. Hey, you know, one, two, three main street, open escrow request, have a template, have a template email. Cause you're going to write this email hundreds of times. That's why, that's how I've been able to outsource this guys. Is I've, I have systems for every single little thing. Believe me, I'm one of those people. Once I do something and it's annoying and boring, I just never want to do it again. I'd rather just focus on building the business. So, as soon as title work gets started, we waste no time. We have some, you know, some equitable interests. Now, this may di be different in some states, but we have some equitable interest that was, you know, gathered once we have our EMD and an intent to purchase the property. Um, you know, we, we reserve that equitable interest by via the contract. And so um, we go ahead and open title and start marketing the, the deal. Now, we don't market the property. We, we market the investment deal. So what that means is I'm not marketing this house, I'm not saying buy this house, I'm saying buy this investment deal. So here we have a North Phoenix deal, huge nugget here, guys. I, I would probably say from what I can see, I'm not, you know, anybody special, but 
I don't ever put out the address. I don't understand why people do that. Number one, it's probably it's in some states it's probably illegal. You're probably um, brokering without a license. You should not be advertising a house for sale. You should be advertising a deal, an investment deal, um, and you don't promise any returns and things like that. So what you're going to do, and if you do, disclose that they're all estimates. So what you're going to do is you're going to just put in from the north, south, east, west on in both of your this is our site for the website for advertising the deal and this is a craigslist ad so uh, the reason i do that is it prevents two things again huge nugget here number one the reason i don't give out the address is i don't want other wholesalers illegally marketing our property which also causes confusion to potential real buyers and number two i don't want the homeowner to google their own address and find it for sale again it just it, that doesn't make sense now you could go the route of hey mr and mrs homeowner uh this is how we operate and you can disclose it in a certain way even though it's disclosed on the purchase contract by the way this is no sleight of hand they should be aware that we have the right to double close and make earn a profit it's disclosed in the contract and if your contract doesn't say that I, I recommend you get with an attorney uh and get that legal advice and make sure it's disclosed but you don't you know imagine put yourself in the homeowner's shoes you, you think that this companies buying your property and then they turn around and you know they're they're not they're basically just sort of this middleman again and you know consumers are getting smarter smarter and smarter they you know they have friends in the industry they have realtors and realtors who've dealt with investors and you know unfortunately they, everybody only remembers not the properties that closed and were successful they remember the, the horror stories so that realtor is going to be a bird in their ear and hey make sure they're not trying to remarket your property and all that stuff so Either A, you take the route of being up front and telling them, hey, I may bring a partner in, X, Y, Z, it's disclosed in the contract, or B, you just let them know um, uh, behind the scenes, hey, we're going to bring in money partners, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to tell them you'll be marketing it in any way. It already says that in the contract, but you're going to save yourself a huge headache, huge headache by just not putting an address out there. You don't want the homeowner finding it on Craigslist or on your website or whatever, and you don't want your buyer seeing it on three, four, five, six different websites for different prices. Okay, get your wholesale game right, especially the wholesalers out there that that go out there, take pictures from a website, put it on their site, and just spaghetti a wall. That's that's unprofessional. It's a very lazy way to do the industry. I've never done that, and that's why I've I've had so much success. Is that I just first of all I only deal directly with the homeowner. I don't do what I call secondary um investments where i'm on the you know the third person in the daisy chain i just avoid those um the only time i do is if i know the investor and i know his or her title company and i'll go for it so a lot of that may not have made a whole lot of sense to you newbies but believe me as you dig into this and you start marketing other people's properties you'll see what kind of headache you're going to have so we're direct to homeowner here we have no worries and we control the outside which is who's marketing our property and who's not all right, so you see the advertisements, very straightforward. We're looking for a buyer, guys. Let's move on to a problem. So you thought this was all rainbows and unicorns. You thought you were going to make a bunch of money and you're, you're in real estate. Well, guess what? There's hangups, guys. They happen. And this particular one, what ends up happening is when our repair estimator, this is a new department in our company, by, by the way, um, we used to just kind of trust our software, not just necessarily for the values, but for also the, the repair estimates. We use some in-house um, like quick calculations based on the price per square, rather the square foot to come up with repairs. And then we have acquisitions take a guess at, well, what do we keep? What do we not? What have we done on our past flips? And, and it's not always that accurate. Well, this is a case, guys. We went out there and the fact that the property was much, much larger. Every square foot of property's larger, repair costs are going to be larger. Okay. There's a huge difference between 1,500 square foot of flooring and 2,000 square foot of flooring, obviously. So if you're so caught up, is, and if you're also the person you train to go get a contract is so caught up on, okay, I just need to know the ARV. I need to know the negotiation. I need to know all the, you know, the, uh, what the, uh, what are they called? Um, the, uh, the situation where the homeowner says this, the overcoming objections, they might forget about the numbers of repairs. And if they just kind of put something out there just to get the contract, now you're going to be you'd be stuck in a situation where you're going to have to renegotiate. In this particular case, we're transitioning into getting contractors, actual contractors that go out with our acquisitions. And what ended up happening is that first contractor was saying it was 15 to 20 and the second and third are at 24, 26. And here's another nugget. 
just like any industry, guys, there are individuals, contractors who will lowball it, lowball the contract to you saying, hey, I can do this for 15K. And then once they get in, they're going to mark everything up. See what they've done is shook off all the fleas, right? And now they're they're with you and they're just like, look, I'm you're in too deep. And it's just a real bad way to do business, but it happens, right? And you don't have time to, to even worry about that. You're just thinking the homeowner, I have a closing date coming up and blah, blah, blah. So definitely always get, if you if you do this route that we're doing in our model, three or four estimates, it's, it's just been a huge blessing. So we were able to catch on to it. What it also does is make sure that when we put the property out, that our end buyers who, who may be way more experienced in terms of rehabs, that they're not going, what are you putting out? Like you're putting this out at 215, you say it needs 15K in repairs, it needs 35K, okay? And you don't want to tarnish your name. So what ended up happening is exactly that on this deal is we were transitioning over, we caught it, third contractor uh, didn't even go out there, um, the homeowner didn't let him in, there was some confusion. So there's a sort of hang up on the pricing. So the repair estimate comes in and it actually comes in at $26,000. You can see that this person's like, hey, you know, you need new kitchen cabinets, even though it's smaller, new lighting. We're going to really make that pop. We're going to update at least one of these uh, tub and showers. Uh, popcorn ceiling, that was something that actually our acquisition repair estimator didn't even mention. And that needs to be removed. Nobody likes that anymore. That's very 19, uh, late 1970s, early 80s. And then uh, you can see all this other stuff. So 26K. So what we had to do is go back to the homeowner. Here we are thinking, gosh, we have this marketed out there. We need to drop the price. We even dropped the ARV. We went out instead of being at 274, 275, we dropped it to 264. And we went ahead and uh, updated those repairs and we lowered our profit. So you see how we can kind of finagle each section and make it a deal again. So then we went back to the homeowner and we just explained, hey, look, you know, there's more in repairs. You didn't let one of our contractors in to get in our final estimate on whatever bedroom or whatever it may be. You know, we need to be at this amount. And the homeowner wasn't too happy about it, but they understood. They they got it. They they knew that when originally when they're selling it, especially considering the MLS, they knew that this needed a lot of updating. Not necessarily repairs. It's not like there's holes in the walls, but just updating, updating, updating. It was an old home. And um, so we reconsidered it and renegotiated. So at the same time, and again, guys, it's not all, you know, rainbows and unicorns. These things can happen, but you need to be prepared. Always be thinking of the worst case scenario and how you're going to handle it. And you'll be much better off in this industry. At the same time this is happening, our buyers going, we had, uh, I believe, two buyers go out there. And one we've worked with quite a bit. And they're just like, look, um, 205 is not going to work for us. You need to be in uh, barely, you know, 200 or just below. And we're like, you know what? Great. Let's do this. Let's go ahead on the disposition side. Let's do 190. Also, too, he, he couldn't get his or her funds together. I believe that they were doing it with a family member. Um, and that can happen from time to time, guys, where, you know, there's a buyer who takes down a lot of rehabs themselves. They're tied on their cash, but they may have a, a brother, sister, a friend who knows they're successful. And they just kind of pass a deal off to them and say, hey, you're a realtor. You have a license. Why don't you just take down this property? I'll even go halves with you. I'm, I got my plate full, but I'm telling you, it's a deal if you do it this way. And so that was the case. So they needed another week to close, guys. So we, we were in a tough situation, a very tough situation. And you just, you know, that feeling you get when you have that knot in your stomach, that's how we felt about this deal. Like we really need to get this on board. Um, by the way, when you scale your teams, I always recommend meetings, meetings, meetings every day in the morning, just quick 15 minute meetings. Like, Hey, this is what's going on in this deal. This is what's going on in this deal. And you kind of inch everything forward the best you can, especially on something challenging. This is priority. Well, lo and behold, we went back out there and we rene renegotiated. So we went, we, we did a $20,000 drop guys. That's what success is all about. It's not about, you know, you have a tough situation. Oh, whoa, it wasn't for me. No, you do what you have to do. And, and these are people's houses. Always, always, always make sure that you take care of your homeowner. So we went back out there and we explained the situation. Look, you know, we weren't able to get in the third time. Uh, haven't had the best communication with you guys in terms of letting our, our folks in. Um, we really need to be here. Here's the, the copy of the contract. We give them a copy of the um, actual repair estimate. And they were like, yep, okay, we're not happy about it, but we get it. As long as you guys can close on time. So we did an extension. We got it. Boom. So this this is an addendum, by the way, to the original contract at 205. Now we're at 185, and we're going to sell it for 190. And uh, the buyer was happy. 
we moved forward and here we go five thousand dollars profit so this is our new corporate account we opened up at b of a you can see the close date uh november 16th so yeah five thousand profit just like that now i was able to show you this in a you know 30 minute video hopefully you guys appreciate how detailed these are these take quite a bit of time to put together but if you love these videos, if you like seeing these different from other, you know, so-called educators where it's constantly just bombarding you with the latest and greatest X, Y, Z, I wanted to be different guys. I wanted to have real, you know, testimonials of, of what we provide and also real deals. And that's a good gauge when you're looking on YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is, you know, and people are saying X, Y, Z, I, I can do this, this and that. I look for proof. Proof is in the pudding. And that's how we wanted to be different. So here's a $5,000 profit. I have, by the way, other 5, 10 videos on other deals. You can look at them. And don't be shy. If you have a question at all underneath this video, if you're watching it on Facebook or, or perhaps YouTube, drop a comment. Tag somebody. I got you. Whether it's about marketing, sales in this industry, talking to buyers and sellers, building, scaling a team, contracts, whatever it is please, please drop that comment underneath the video and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to floss, you know, tag somebody if you like this video, if they're trying to get into real estate, go ahead and follow us online. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we got our Twitter account and opt in at their website. You can get a free REI gig bag with over $327 worth of stuff. And when you subscribe to our channel, stay tuned for future trainings. You'll be the first to hear about them. Thanks again, Randy, the REI Rockstar. Have yourself a blessed day and we'll see you on the next one.